92.9 Dave FM. Well, it wasn't a rumor. It's true. Warren Haynes is here and he is taking over my studio for an hour. Taking over. I know. Shame on you. You're coming in here taking things over. Actually, no, it's been fun. The <laughs> list of music you got here about a half hour ago, and I love that too, by the way. But the list of music that you want to play tonight, incredible. Very uh -huh. diverse. Very cool. Looking forward to playing it. I could get even weirder, but I figured uh, you guys might not let me come back if I did that. No, you've been very pleasant. You're welcome back anytime. Okay. <laughs> Each time well, I come back, I'll just get weirder and weirder, okay. and then eventually you'll bar me from the place. Okay, is that what you're going for? No. I don't want to go visit Mark or <laughs> <laughs> All right, Warren, I thought because you have such a huge body of work and have done things with so many people i thought i would start with one of your songs now you didn't pick this i want to make that clear i picked this okay. it's not like you came you in pick? here i picked uh when you did our circle of friends mm -hmm. you did soul shine yeah and that's what i picked that version okay. from our circle of friends but i don't want everyone to think you came here and said play my music because you're very self-effacing you're not like that at all is it good you want to hear it and find out? No, you can play it. I don't have All to right. hear it. All right. All right. I'll play it for everybody else, and we'll turn the monitors down right. in here. Okay. okay. Ninety-two-nine, Dave FM. That is Warren Haynes from our circle of friends, and actually, that's Warren Haynes recorded, but uh, he's live in studio, which doesn't. Get, I don't get to do that very often. Go. Oh, that was the. And guess what? He's here. So. Well, Welcome. Be here. Government Mule is performing at uh, Masquerade on Saturday. And you're kind of all over the place. You're not in Atlanta for the week. You're going all over, and then you're coming back for the show Saturday. Right, that's correct. And uh, before the mics went on, I heard that there's somebody who's not played in Atlanta before. Well, we have a new bass player, Jorgen Carlson, who's been with us less than a year now. And so he hasn't played in Atlanta with us yet. So it'll be the first Atlanta appearance with, with him. Uh, and we, we're just now starting to play some of the new songs uh, from our new record that's coming out in September, too. So it's it's an exciting time for us right now. We have, we have all this new material that we're dying to play. And it's, it's a very cathartic transitional period for us right now. We all feel like we're breaking through to something that is... Uh, we're really excited about. You did say I was really going to like the album. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's very much a rock and roll record. I, it's, uh, you know, it. I keep telling people at the risk of being cliche, it sounds like we're moving forward and backward at the same time. There's a lot of the songs are different than anything we've ever done, but still some of the songs kind of harken back to our first couple of records and kind of where we started out. So uh, I'm really excited about it. Jorgen kind of brings back that reckless abandon spirit that Alan Woody had, our original bass player, and he's the first person since Alan Woody passed away that brings that real aggressive nature to the music, and so it's kind of forcing our hand, and so we're like, okay, how do we respond to that? So you up the ante for you a little bit. Oh, yeah. very cool. And so we went immediately into the studio to challenge ourselves and see what happened, and we wound up writing a lot of songs in the studio, which is very different for us. I mean, in the past, we may write one song in the studio, but to write three or four was very different for us. But a lot of stuff just started happening, and we just went with it. And uh, we recorded more material than, than we needed, and a lot of the stuff that was written at the last minute wound up being some of the best material. So. I'm really psyched about it, and uh, as is everyone in the band. I'm excited to hear it because you were so excited about it. You're doing yeah. a very good job. I mean, talking about it, just like your face lights up. You well, probably don't know that, but no, it does. Uh, I, I don't know that, and now I'll be self-conscious about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am excited, as is as is everyone in the band, really. But it's. Uh, I don't know, I just really feel like it's, it sounds like Government Mule, but it doesn't sound like anything we've done before. Um, I really like the way it sounds sonically. I, I really like the, the whole kind of, uh, kind of devil may care attitude that we made the whole record with. It's, it's not meant to uh, compete with any current music. It's just meant to compete with music in general. 
that's the best way for it to be. To be honest, it's just that that's the kind of thing that comes through on an album. You can hear that, you can sense it, you can feel it. Certain albums come out, and I'm not naming names, but certain albums come out, and they just feel so crafted. Yeah. Yeah. This this sounds like it's just musicians who love being musicians, playing music that they love playing with a different element added to bring everyone together. You know, I've always felt like if you make yourself happy, people know that. And so as an artist or as a band, uh, if the band's having fun, the crowd can tell that. If the band is enjoying the new music that they're playing, the crowd can tell that. And, and uh, art in general is meant to kind of evolve that way. And uh, it starts with something that you do for yourself. And then however many people like it, that's great. But you have to like it yourself first and foremost. And you know, I think a lot of times people in the music business forget that because it it, it is a business, but there's before, a lot of pressure to be The successful. reason it's the music business is because the music comes before the business and, and I, I, that's the stupidest thing I probably ever said, but it, it's true. Um, because there wouldn't be a music business without the music and a lot of times the business people forget that part. They do. You want to go back in the day from when the music business was more music than business? Because you picked out some great songs to play tonight. Well, a lot of my favorite stuff was definitely made then, and I think for the same reason that people were making the music they wanted to make, and the people that were in charge of selling it didn't really understand it anyway, so they are trying to figure out, okay, how do I sell this? But they weren't trying to change it because they knew that people were onto something. Well, you picked, we're going to play uh, Traffic, uh, John Barley Corn. One of my all-time favorites. I was going to ask why you picked it, but that's all that needs to be said about it, unless you want to explain. Well, you know, that song is the epitome of a rock band doing an ancient folk song uh, and, and making it their own. The, the melody in John Barley Corn is probably hundreds of years old. And speaking of, I, I didn't plan this, but there's a song on the new Government Mule record called Railroad Boy, that's a traditional uh, English folk song or, or uh, Celtic folk song that we put a rock arrangement to in the same way that Led Zeppelin would do to like Gallows Pole or uh, In My Time of Dying or something like that. Um, but the song is probably more than 100 years old. And uh, I just thought of that in relation. Now, the difference being uh, our song, our version of Railroad Boy is very much a rock and roll interpretation where this is folk music uh, as interpreted by rock musicians which is just beautiful and it's John Barleycorn and Traffic as picked by Warren Haynes on Day Not asked you before is um, I guess it was 99 maybe 2000 you guys uh, did a couple of shows um, one here one in Athens um, with John Schofield right uh, wondering, wondering, and I know that you have a lot of a lot of back catalog stuff. Um, being the kind of band that you guys are, um, any any plans to ever release that? Any plans to put that out, kind of like you do the Christmas Jam stuff or, or something similar? Uh, you can, if you, you talk, can hear me, Drew. I can hear you. Yep. Uh, yeah, actually, we have mixed and even mastered uh, uh, a part of the Atlanta show. Okay. Uh, one CD's worth of material that I think is is awesome. And okay. at some point, uh, we've been meaning to put it out for years, and uh, since it's Alan Woody playing bass on that stuff, we'll probably do it at some point on one of Woody's anniversary or birthday or something. But okay. uh, cool. yeah. we, we have so much material that we're trying to get out, it, it kind of tends to take... Uh, longer sometimes to get some of that stuff out, but I, I'm excited about that stuff. As is Schofield, he and I talked about it at length, uh, how great it turned out. So he, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. At some point, we definitely want to put that stuff out, and it sounds really good. Good, good. Yeah, glad to hear that. Uh, again, I don't know if I mentioned that. I was just kind of thinking ahead of myself, but I did. I was at both shows. That was that was great. So uh, yeah, look forward to that, and uh, looking for the new record. Looking forward to the new record as well. And you're going Saturday, right? You get you. You betcha. All right, just check so, <laughs> Yep, yep. Uh, the, the music part, in my opinion, is uh, one of the uh, the great unknowns of the Atlanta music, Atlanta music scene for some reason. 
Um, it's, a, it's a great little place, especially in the summertime. Um, you know, it's really intimate. Um, and, and, you know, I know you guys have played there a couple, three years ago. I was there at that show, of course, as well. But looking forward to it. Yeah, us too. It's a great place to play. Yep. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. And sure. uh, Thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Sure thing. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye. 92.9, Dave FM and John Barleycorn. Warren Haynes is my guest tonight. He's taking over my studio for an hour, but in a nice, polite way, not a get out, not playing what I want. Well, you can Sorry. stay. You just, Thanks. You just don't have any say in what I, we're going to play. I can run the board. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Actually, you've picked up some very interesting songs, and I like... First of all, thank you for asking if, you know, these were okay to play. But the way I see it is Warren Haynes has taken the time to come into my studio. You can play what you want. Great. You know. I like that. I got a dumb button over there if you want to get, you know, saucy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next cut we discussed. Yeah. Is? Ray LaMontagne. Hey, if you're going to take over, the, man, you got to do the work. Well, I figure, you know, we started with something old. Now let's go to something a little newer. Uh, I like timeless music. I like music that you're going to like 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And when I first heard Ray LaMontagne's uh, first record, uh, trouble the it just hit me like that could be in any decade over the last 40 years and uh, and it would stand up and, and be real in any of those decades and so I've uh, been a, a fan ever since and uh, this tracks one of my favorite from that record that's his first record his third record is out now which I love as well mm -hmm. but, but since I we're not little... doing anything well, you Traditional. Could. You could if you wanted, but you don't have to. And actually, you know, we talked a lot about Otis writing both, uh, mostly off the air, but yeah. um, I hear a lot of Otis writing in Ray Lamontain for some reason. It's not like he's trying to, there's, I think it's the instrumentation of his songs that reminds me of Otis writing. Yeah, and I, I would say that he's a fan, you know, someone who looks at Otis the way I do as being one of the greatest of all times, you know, and uh, he definitely conjures up some of that spirit here and there. Uh, that's one of the people that I think uh, when people review his records, people tend to hear some of Otis in there, you know. And you hear a lot of things that he doesn't necessarily sound like. He doesn't sound like Cat Stevens, but you hear some Cat Stevens in there too, you know. Um, but I, I, I just really dug his voice before I knew him, and I've known him a long time now. Uh, I just, when I first heard his voice, I thought, wow, this is, uh, this is not your run-of-the-mill young singer. This is somebody who has some depth to their soul. Well, I am looking forward to playing this. It's Warren Haynes in studio with me tonight, basically taking it over. Yep, taking it over. Yep, in a mean, mean way, because he's a mean, mean man. No, I'm kidding. He's Ray LaMontagne. <laughs> You're working. Uh, I am. Yeah, I'm taking over. over. Remember? Warren Haynes is in studio with me tonight. He's taking over. He actually made a special trip here because Government Mule is not playing at Masquerade until Saturday. That's right. And I appreciate it. And that was Ray LaMontagne, the song Shelter. Beautiful. I just did your job for you. Well, you do it better <laughs> than me, anyway. <laughs> at least you're not going to say, yeah, well, you're going to play guitar Saturday because that would be dreadful. I feel confident I can handle that part better than this. I, I'm a little nervous doing this. You're fine. Oh, okay. No, great. All right, does that, does that mean if I play Joni Mitchell or something, people will be okay with it? Well, it depends on how you introduce it. Okay. It's all in the presentation. If I go, ladies and gentlemen, this is Black Sabbath, and then I play Joni Mitchell. Then people would be mad at you, and rightly so. Yeah. Yeah. I think That's that the ultimate like, fake out. People don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that either. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got more of your choices coming up. Um, should we give some, as we call it in the business, teases? Yeah, sure. Um, what do you want to tease? One of the songs that what, what we're playing next. Well, when I was looking through the catalog, which is amazing, there's so much great stuff. Uh, I was like, I could come back and take over for about 10 hours. That'd be cool. Um, Come back tomorrow night. I'll take the night off. <laughs> <laughs> there's this old, there's an old Little Feet record called Hoy Hoy, which was put out after Little George died, and it's like outtakes, alternate takes, live takes, all sorts of weird stuff. And there's a few real, real, real gems on that record. Uh, one of which is this song that we're going to play called China White. Uh, great performance by Lowell, and. Uh, 
it makes me wonder why it never came out when he was alive because it's a really great version. And that, by the way, was not a tease. That was introducing the song. Yeah, you know, I told you I wasn't any good at this. <laughs> More with Warren Haynes and his wonderful choices in music next. I'm Dave FM. Warren Haynes is in the studio with me tonight, and he has chosen a whole bunch of songs, a wide range of songs. And earlier you were explaining, Warren, about the, the next selection we're going to play, but you said you had a story, too. Well, uh, I've chosen this uh, Little Feet song, China White, from the record Hoy Hoy, which was put out after Lowell George died. Uh, you know, I, Lowell was uh, among my many influences, but, you know, most of my favorite singers were all black soul singers or black blues singers, and the few that weren't, the, the few that were like white singers or, or rock singers were singers that sounded like they grew up listening to soul music or, or blues and, and, and Lowell, aside from being such a great slide guitar player and songwriter, just had a beautiful voice, you know, so a big influence on myself. But as I mentioned before, I always wondered why this song never got released before he was before he passed, because it's it's a great performance. Do I need to do the honors? No. All right. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You're taking over my studio. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Taking over. Uh, this is China White by Little Feet. Very good. I'm Dave FM. Warren Haynes has taken over my studio, but in a nice way. He's picked all the music that peaceful you've been enjoying. Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> it's a peaceful revolution, yes. And it will not be televised. Uh, anyway, he uh, that was Little Feet. And you, you have some great stories. We could do this all night. So yeah. We're not going to, but we not. could. <laughs> hey, I'm taking over here. <laughs> I don't want to keep running the R anyway. It's not like the old Alan Freed days where we just board up the studio and stay in here for three days. No. You know, I'm taking it over, but you know, but 30 minutes, you got to go. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, the, the studio doors are two studio doors. One has a lock on it, the other one does not. Ah, okay. See, so you can pretend to lock yourself in, but then they can come in behind you and get you out. They. The proverbial they. they. <laughs> so your next choice is, is again, an interesting choice, because when you first came in the studio, we were talking about things that you wanted to play, and you've got a very diverse playlist, and we started talking about soul music, and then you brought up Otis well, Redding, but then you also brought up... Bill Withers. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite voices as well. Um, I picked this song for a few reasons. It's a, it's a great song. It's a timeless song. He has a timeless voice. And people tend to forget about Bill because he kind of retired from the music business and kind of washed his hands of the whole scene. Um, but he wrote this song called I Can't Write Left, excuse me, I Can't Write Left Handed about a guy in Vietnam that got shot in his right arm but it holds true today in the current times that we're living in so I thought oh, it'd be nice to bring this back it's a it's a it's a beautiful song it's not your typical protest song it's got some humor it also has some connecting with the enemy one of the things that I love about this tune is that the narrator of the song realizes that he's in a war fighting someone that he doesn't know and for all he knows the person may be a beautiful human being and and so that's one of the intriguing parts of it's kind of like in world war one when they had the no man's land and they would sit there and they would mingle the the soldiers yeah. from either side and then you know all of a sudden they're back to trying to yeah. kill each other yeah which makes no sense exactly so warren haynes is taking over my studio tonight an excellent choice with bill withers and i can't write left-handed on david Bill Withers, and I can't write left-handed on 92.9 Dave FM. Warren Haynes is in studio. He chose that song, as you've chosen all the songs in this hour. Yeah, I hadn't heard that in a while, huh? No, no. Actually, that, I, very haunting. And, and our off-air conversation was very spirited. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting a little political. We don't want to... Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, keep that, we'll keep that off the microphone. But <laughs> you do have a couple more choices. And uh, I want to make sure that you get them. So when we come back, Warren Haynes has two more songs, and both have very good stories to go with them, right? Sure. Yeah, Better. Absolutely. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
Dave FM. Warren, this is so much fun. Don't want it to end. Warren Haynes is in the studio with me tonight. It was supposed to be a takeover for an hour. But you have two more songs. Yeah, we'll get a little more than that. Because I am enjoying having you in here so much. It's been a pleasure. And because I've never been on time for anything in my life. <laughs> okay, that too. <laughs> I'm going to cue up the song. Hang okay. On. No problem. All right. If it's the one I think it is, we're good to go. Okay. Well, uh, if it's the one I think it is, it's for the, the new Derek Trucks band yes. CD. We would did it right. Uh, it's a song called Back Where I Started that uh, Derek and I wrote together at his studio in, in Florida. And his lovely wife Susan is singing a beautiful version of this song. Um, they do New Year's Eve shows here. Every yeah, year. they mm -hmm. do. Which uh, is becoming tradition. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, but I really, really, I, I like the, the whole new record a lot. But uh, this song in particular, regardless of the fact that that we wrote it together. Uh, I'm just really proud of the way it turned out, and she did an amazing job singing it. I, I, of all the songs that I've written or co-written, this one definitely is one of the ones that has a special place with me. I, I would like to some eventually do a, my own version of this tune. Okay, well, let's play it. Please. Do you want to do the intro? Uh, it's Back Where I Started by the Derek Trucks Band. I'll make a DJ out of you yet. <laughs> 92.9 Dave FM, Warren Haynes taking over my studio tonight. We're running a little long because you picked some really good songs. we got one more you want to hear. But by the way, back where I started, Derek Trucks Band, beautiful Beautiful song. song. You, you weren't lying. No, yeah, I wouldn't lie really to pretty. you. I liked it. By the way, I just asked Warren Haynes if he could name somebody he didn't know. And he's still thinking. <laughs> You I told you I was nervous. You know everybody. It's not because you're nervous. It's because you know everybody. It's a small world. The music <laughs> business is a small world. Uh, okay. You know, you run into people, you know, and I'm sure I could make you a long list of people that I've never met, but I just I can't think of I know. It was just fun to tease you about <laughs> it. Because actually, you know, before you came in, I was just reading up to make sure I knew everything that you were up to currently. And of course, you know, you get all the bio and everything. It's like, yeah, Warren Haynes worked with this person and this person and this person and this person. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to talk to him about? So you're going to have to come back so we can continue yeah, the stories. Yeah, so we can You have tell many. That is true. I have many stories and I would be happy to come back and tell them. I hope you do. And I mean that sincerely. Yeah, me too. Government Mule is performing at Masquerade on Saturday. And you've got an album coming out in September, Government Mule does. Yep. But you have a solo album coming out next year. Yeah. You're just busy. Anything else? You've got your Christmas jam you do every year. The Christmas jam, this will be the 21st. We we're just now starting to reach out to people for it. But if, if the last few years are any indication, that it, it'll just keep getting better and better. Rest just a little bit. I intend to. Okay. I have a vacation in mind. And... Uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the end of the year, but I'm also enjoying what's going on right now. There's a lot of exciting stuff happening. So people say, are, are, do you complain about being busy? I love what I do. You know, I have the best job in the world, so I really can't complain. Uh, you know, the hardest part about my job is being away from home and traveling and eating terrible food and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But uh, to complain about my job would be pretty ridiculous because I've been really fortunate and surrounded by great musicians and I do what I love for a living, you know. I would do it for free, so to get paid is kind of nice. That's good. Your face is lit up about 15 times when you, because you could, yeah. If you, if you sit across from Warren, you can tell he loves what he's doing. You're not just saying. Well, that's true. Yeah. I, I, and I, that, that's a definite. As far as my face being lit up, maybe I'll just... Yeah, no, it's not the lighting, because you know I like it like a cave in here. Yeah, you anyway, do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> You've got one more song. and uh, and an I appropriate really, song, I, I might add. Yes. I really hate to cut you off, because your choices are very interesting. But you want to you explain this one? Well, uh, you should probably do it rather than me. Tom Petty, a few years back, wrote this song called The Last DJ that not predicted what was ahead as far as radio, et cetera, et cetera, but because it, the, it had already started at that point. 
but a, a really good portrayal uh, of what's going on uh, to people like us that, that grew up listening to radio personalities that would turn you on to their favorite music and how uh, it's so rare that even a station like you guys plays music that you love. A lot of stations, the people playing the music don't even like the music they're playing. And so with that in mind, a song like The Last DJ is just amazingly prophetic or at least uh, poignant. Warren, thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Warren Haynes, and uh, if you liked his playlist, I will make sure that uh, you get what it was. I wrote them all down. Anyway, here is his, his, his last choice for the night, but it's not the last time he'll be in our studios. This is Tom Petty's last DJ. Thanks again, Warren. Absolutely. I love this.